Today with Joseph Prince. My Bible says, as your days, so shall your strength be. Amen. That is opposite of what the world teaches. Jesus said, as you have believed, so be it done unto you. This promise of renewal of youth is for those who are safe under the gospel of Jesus Christ, who believe that God gives His righteousness to us. God will restore to you the years the years, God will restore to you. God says, I'll restore to you the years. Whatever does that mean? I take God at His word. Yeah. I, I don't, I, you know, there's a reason people don't pray because when they pray, it's not logical. It has already happened. Or, you know, I, it's not logical. I, I, how can I pray for something that has, that's not even there yet? You know, I, 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 it's not logical. Hey, mothers, you can start praying even though your daughter is now only 10 years old. You can start praying for her future husband. Yeah. That God will protect him. Amen. From all the... Uh, the, the onslaughts of the enemy, God will cause him to have the spirit of wisdom and revelation in, Christ, in the knowledge of Christ, that he will grow up with the favor of God. You can pray for him now. Don't wait until you see him and this, the, mommy, this is my boyfriend, and you start praying for him then. Amen? <laughs> Amen. Even then, you don't know, is that the final one? You do not know. So start praying. Amen. Because God transcends time and space. But when the moment you start thinking logically, oh no, you know, the, I, we have not met the person yet. We do not know, you know, whether my daughter will even be married, that kind of thing. Hey, your prayer, you know, you know when, when you're in the timeless zone and you are in the place where it transcends space, when you are praying. When you are praying, God can go to your past and, and, and heal that hurt. When that teacher in kindergarten, all right, um, uh, the ignorant teacher caused you to stand up and embarrass you and, and the people laugh and, and all, all the kids laugh and, and, and she laughed and that caused a hurt. And today you, are, you don't know why you cannot stand in public. You, you don't know why you can't, you, you feel the fear, but you don't know where the fear came from. You don't know why all this, but the Lord can go back come on, come on. when you pray yeah. and touch that area of fear and free you from it. A pastor, no one can go back to the past unless they have a time machine. Yes, Einstein says that, that uh, if you travel at the speed of light, 186,000 miles per second in a, in a vehicle, when you come back, all your friends have grown old. We've seen movies on this. All your friends have grown old, which means, but you are still young, which means if you live in the spirit, in the light. Wow. Amen? 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 So may more and more of you not be bound by time and space. <laughs> Praise God. Amen? And some of you ladies need to learn to use the theme of the year in your favor. If a guy is pursuing you and you don't like him, tell him this, give me time and space. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. All right. Praise God. God can restore to you the years. I, I, I shared with you all that uh, for me, I felt like uh, I, 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 uh, the years that I had with uh, Jessica passed by so fast. And, and I treasure every moment that I have with her now. It's a totally, you know, it's like a different Jessica. But I miss the Jessica, there was a young Jessica as well. But I, I, I really love the, the woman that she has become, you know. But when I look back, I kind of wish I had another child again. Then I look at my age in the natural. Can I have that again? This was the verse that rescued me. God says, you want it, you can have it. I'll restore to you the years. I asked God for it, and God restored to me the years. And now I have a boy, amen. I can do all this again. All the vicissitudes of getting on the floor and playing with him as if, as if, amen, that uh, I'm going back in time and now cherishing every moment. Wow. I asked God for that. I didn't say, oh, at my age and all that and all, I don't know I can and all that. I don't, I don't. In fact, in the natural, I didn't want to, but it was my wife's faith. She said, go for it. Amen. amen. I'll restore to you the years. Wow. It's not just that. It's like the quality, you know. I'm not talking about just, you know. God didn't change my age. Amen? I believe He renewed my youth. Yeah. Right, but God didn't change my age. My age is still my age. But you know, you can be healthier and stronger Amen. and more intelligent at this advanced age that you are in now. I won't say what age. Than you were when you were in your 20s. I hear testimonies of people when they're blessed by God. I'm telling you, they are stronger today. They have more energy than they had when they were in their 20s or 30s. They're always tired. Believe God for that. God can restore to you the years. God can restore to you the years. Don't say, how oh, can you? Once the path is past. Then you're living in the time zone. What is past is past. God can do it. Amen. Can I have a good amen? Are you struggling spiritually or exhausted from trying to be a perfect Christian? Will you let us bless you with a copy of Joseph's foundational book, Destined to Reign, today? 
Find out why your Christian walk is not about what you can do for God, but what He has already done for you. Request your free copy of Destined to Reign by visiting josephprince.org new or texting new to 71239 today. Offer available to U.S. residents only. Would you like to know the secret? God can do this. First of all, let me show you the, the, the plan of God. Job 33. And uh, Job 33, then God is gracious to him when he, when he calls on God. God says, deliver him from going down to the pit. Probably God is talking to the angel. And God says, I found a ransom. We know who the ransom is. Who is your substitute? Jesus. So God says, I found a ransom. So deliver that, that sinner out of the pit. Amen. His flesh. Notice, this is not something that we teach after people get saved. <laughs> after they are delivered from the pit, we should, we, pit, we should teach them, hey, your flesh is, shall be fresher than a child's. You see, there's a promise. It's God's Word. Every scripture is God breathed, right? Yes. His flesh, flesh, not your this spiritual pastor brain. Flesh, love, brother. <laughs> flesh. <laughs> Don't try. What is flesh? How can you spiritualize flesh? He didn't say your spirit shall be fresher. It's flesh. Yes. I believe God. You're the one I take. Yes. Amen. It only happens for those who believe. Yes. For those who say amen. Yes. Amen means so be it. Yes. His flesh, your flesh, yes. my flesh shall be fresher than a child's. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Not only that, he shall return to the days of his youth. Now, don't let that time-bound mind start reasoning again. Ah, oh, once it's past, it's past. I long for the days of youth, but it's just a memory. God says, you will return to the days of your youth. Amen. Some grandmothers are concerned. I can see their faces in the audience. They're a bit concerned for their husbands now. Amen. Amen. It's okay. Enjoy. Like Abraham did. And you're a child. You're a seed of Abraham, my, my friend. You don't want to also can, okay? He said, no, no. I, I just I, I accept my age. And, uh, you know, uh, some things will just wear out when you grow, come to this age, you know? I've been reading articles by experts that are bound by time and space. And, and they will tell, you say, once you come to this age, you know, be like that. Ding, 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 ding. After that, this thing will, dun, 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 dun. then this one will fall off. And finally, you yourself will collapse, you know? <laughs> now, my Bible says, as your days, so shall your strength be. Amen. That is opposite of what the world teaches. But Jesus said, as you have believed, so be it done unto you. Everything that Jesus taught has to do with time and space. Not everything, but his miracle has got to do with time and space. Even the guy, the cripple at Bethesda, Jesus knew that he's been like this for 38 years. Time. Time. There's a certain season, the angel will come down, stir the water. Time. And, but you must follow the time. You don't get in at that time, wrong time. You are late, not on time. Other people go in because they have the space. You don't have the space. And how to have the space? Even you are nearby, you cannot walk. So definitely space is not in your favor. Jesus transcends all that. You know what? Pick up your bed. Arise and walk. He transcends time and space. And a 38-year uh, affliction was healed in an instant. So every, all the miracles of Jesus has got to do with time and space. Amen? So for us, we talk to the Lord. You're talking to the one who did all this that I just shared with you. He can transcend time and space. He can, break, he can cause your flesh to be fresher than a child's and cause you to return to the days of your youth. Next verse tells us, it's the gospel. He shall pray unto God and he'll be favorable unto him. Gospel, grace. And he shall see his face with joy. God's face with joy. For he will render, God will render unto man his righteousness. Should be capital H. In your new King James, it's capital H. His righteousness. It is the gospel of Jesus Christ. The whole thing, this promise of renewal of youth is for those who are safe under the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Wow who believe that God gives His righteousness to us. Amen? Are you with me so far? Would you like to know the secret? Yes. I just told you just now, but the secret is found in the Temple of Solomon. This needs wisdom. Okay, I'm going to share you right now what the Lord shared with me, okay? It's in, found in the lever, the teaching of the lever. The lever in the tabernacle of Moses 
was actually just placed like a simple lever, smaller, and the priest will come, there's a tap down there, they'll wash their hands before they enter the holy place. They all have to wash their hands lest they die, the Bible says. We have a picture of Jesus in John 13. He washed His disciples' feet. And, um, and, and many people still practice that. You know, they wash people's feet physically and all that. But I, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't uh, you know, uh, uh, criticize that. I'm not saying anything. But what Jesus said is not physical. Because He told His disciples, what I do now, you do not know. But you will understand later. That means what? They know what He was doing physically washing their feet. So he says, what I'm doing now, you do not know. It means it's spiritual. That means I'll be in heaven and I'll be washing your feet. Once you're washed by the blood of Jesus, you only have to wash your feet. Not with blood, but with water. The water of my word. Because your feet get dirty. Even as you're righteous, amen, you are clean, but your feet get dirty. In this daily walk in this earth, our feet get dirty. You know who washes it? Our high priest. Every time you come to his word, he uses His Word to wash your feet. Right? So that's the a, that's a picture of the leather with the water. But in the Temple of Solomon, everything is greater and more glorious. Amen. The Temple of Solomon, we see the leather like this. Look at this picture here. We have the 12 oxen. 12 oxen. Three on each side. Amen. Three facing north, south, east, and west. Can you see that? And this is the leather. The water, it can take about, about uh, nearly a hundred tons of water. And, and the priest will come, listen, they'll come to the, you know how they, there's no tap. So how they get the water? From the mouth of the oxen. So they come to, a, a priest will come to one ox, amen. He will, there's a, probably a liver somewhere. He'll lift the liver, the mouth open and water comes out. And he will wash his hands. He'll wash his feet. For us, today, we only wash our feet, spiritually speaking. But we still need the water. Are you with me so far? Do you know what's happening right now? Jesus told his disciples, now you are clean through the word which I've spoken unto you. In John, in the upper room. I'm telling you right now, as the word goes forth, you are being cleansed. Amen. Not for salvation, amen? Only people who are, who are washed by the blood of Jesus, Jesus said, he who is bathed completely needs only to wash his feet. That's for believers. So you are clean. That's why when you leave, after hearing an anointed message, you leave clean. Yeah. And I'm telling you something, church. This cleanliness is what you call opposite of this is. It gives you a rest. It gives you a peace. Yeah. You feel fresh. Like after you are bath, right? You feel good. You feel more energetic. Am I right? For those who bathe. Don't you? Don't you feel more energetic and refreshed? Amen? It washes away all the bacteria. Washes away everything that, you know, can cause disease. I made a study once in Leviticus on the cleansing of the leper and all that. There's blood, but there's also water. It seems like water is tied up with healing. No wonder my words, they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Are you with me so far? Amen. Is this getting exciting? Now I'm coming to that revelation. Are you ready? So, how do they get the water? From the mouth of the oxen. Now there are 12 oxen in the Temple of Solomon representing the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 apostles, as well as ministers. An oxen is a picture of a minister, a preacher of the gospel. Remember the verse that says, uh, muzzle not the ox, that treads out the grain. And then Paul talks about ministers ought to receive the portion there as a double. All right, for their work, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. So it's encouraging people to support their pastors, their, their evangelists, their ministers and all that. Amen. I can preach this because I don't draw a salary from this church. So I'm telling you, the churches and all that, take care of your pastors. Amen. 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 Pray for your pastor. The devil's device is very simple, you know. It's like, why, why attack the entire church? Before you can successfully attack the entire church, attack the shepherd. There's a saying in the Bible, smite the shepherd, the sheep will scatter. So the idea is to attack the shepherd. Are you listening? Blessings of God come on the head. The anointing. As the dew of Hermon, the psalmist says, it comes on the head, 
and down the beard. Say beard. Beard speaks of elders, your leaders. Comes on the head, the beard, and then to the body. It never comes from the bottom. It comes downwards. When you see your leaders blessed, those of you watching, your pastors blessed and all that, you ought to rejoice because you are next. Yeah. It comes on the head. Whatever you see them blessed with. All right? Amen? Praise God. Okay, the council, don't talk to me about restoring my salary. Okay? Uh, it, it won't work unless the Lord tells me. Okay, I'm doing this so that I have a moral authority to speak into churches and all those people out there that is listening. Amen? To take care of their pastors. Because when you see, rejoice when your pastor is blessed. When your pastor is under attack, know this, you are next. Amen? Okay? When somebody speaks bad about your pastor, this is your pastor. They're speaking bad of you. But you don't fight them. Love them. Walk away. Go to the winding stairs. You will stand higher than them. And have a good amen. But just pray for your pastor. I always encourage people. The best thing they can do for the pastors is to pray for them. They are your under shepherds. Your chief shepherd is Jesus. But he releases through the under shepherd, then to the leaders, and then to the body. Can I have a good amen? So watch this. Oxen speaks of laborers in the word. Oxen are, are strong animals. Just like the four gospels. It's like the face of the cherubim that surround God's uh, throne. God's throne has cherubim. Uh, I, I can't explain exactly. They're not exactly angels. They are cherub. They're not the uh, cherub with the arrow, you know, that, that hits you and you're in love, you know. Uh, they try to make you, know, but this cherub are very strong. Uh, in fact, Lucifer, who was Satan later on, he says cherub, a cherub in the, in, the, in the Hebrew. They are strong angels. They are not just angels. They are strong angels close to God's throne. Amen? God had three. One fell. Amen. So we have, we have this cherub, and they have four faces. The Bible says one face, the face of a lion, another the face of an ox, another the face of uh, a, 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 a man, and another face, the face of an eagle on the other side. So the four faces are the four faces of Jesus, the four Gospels. In Matthew, he's always portrayed as a king. You have the lion, the king of the beast. In Mark, the word immediately. That's why his genealogy is not given. Amen? You don't ask a servant for his pedigree. Amen? He's always serving, serving, serving. Gospel of Mark, ox. The face of an ox. Then, the phrase son of man appears more in this Gospel of Luke, the third Gospel you see, than any other Gospel. The son of man. Because there you see him as a man. With the sentiments of a man. Amen? With the, the feelings. You see his feelings and all that expressed. Then you see the Gospel of John. It starts off by saying, no, no genealogy also. It says, in the beginning was the Word. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The Word was God. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The face of a, in the beginning, came from heaven, the eagle. See that? So, ox refers to strong to labor, like our Lord in the Gospel of Mark. Amen? Strong to labor. So, here we have something I want to share with you. First of all, this is not the revelation. This is something I've shared before, but the revelation is coming. It's coming. It's coming. For those who are still awake, it's coming. For many of us, we, we think that I can receive from God's Word straight, Pastor Prince. I can just receive from God's Word, you know. I, I read the Bible and all that. That's great. You ought to spend time in the Word. Amen? But how many knows that sometimes the wisdom, that God's Word is like concentrated. Because it's so powerful, I mean, it's so full, it's like, you need a teacher. And the Bible also says that. He gave gifts to the church. Yeah. Amen? He gave some apostles, some prophets, some pastors, some teachers. These are gifts to the church. Amen? It's a gift, like, brother. Uh, yeah, you, what do you say for a gift? Thank you. Yeah. Once in a while, say thank you to your pastor. Amen, to your leaders, to ministers that you meet. Appreciate them. In a world that disrespects them increasingly, we got to honor them. Amen. They're not perfect. None of these gifts that God gives are perfect. God gives to one, a perfect apostle, perfect prophets, perfect... No, no, no. It's all men with clay feet, but anointed. Amen. amen. Anointed. Can I have a good amen? amen? So here you go. From the mouth of a teacher or a pastor especially the teacher, you have the teaching gift and it opens up the concentrated wisdom of God in a way that you can understand. Amen. So, 
People who just say, I just read my Bible, I don't listen to any other preaching. You are a miss. Number one, actually you think you are humble, that's pride. It's pride because you're not making use of the gifts that God has, has put in the body of Christ. Do you think God gives you lousy gifts? This is God Almighty. Do you think He gives lousy gifts? You may, bro, but He doesn't. God gives good gifts. Amen? Make use of that. Can I be good? Amen. Read the Bible for yourself first and then refer. And then read the daily devo or where the Word of God is being expounded by the teaching gift. Amen. So this oxen, let's go a closer look. This oxen is a picture of the preaching and teaching of God's Word that cleanses. Amen. Are you listening? It is not, it is not receiving, uh, the people, think the priest did not go right on top and wash themselves. No, they receive it from the mouth of the oxen. You know that, that, that phrase that people like to use, you don't have faith, faith cometh. My old King James Version. Faith cometh. Say everyone, faith cometh. But Pastor Prince, I don't have faith to believe for my, my, my healing. Faith cometh. Faith cometh. Cometh is old English, okay? From King James. Old King James, authorized version. Faith come up. Don't have faith now? You're full of fear, worry, cares, panic attacks and all that? Faith come up. How? By hearing and hearing by the Word of God, right? Amen. Am I right? But the idea that hearing and hearing is repeated twice in the verse, but the idea is like, it's hearing and 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 hearing. If the devil is attacking your body 24 hours, right, 24-7, amen? Listen, you ought to be hearing more than that. Yeah. Day and night. If you are particularly under attack, the doctor says you have a few months to live out, forget everything, amen, and focus on the Word. Amen. Amen. Now, don't expect that in Jesus' name, amen, in the year of time and space. I'm just saying, focus on that. It's a protection for you. The devil don't don't take off days, you know. The devil doesn't go back for reunion dinners, you know. (laughs) He's never absent, you know. He even attacks the young. He's no respecter of persons. Yet children or not, he'll just attack if he can. So we believe God for divine protection. Amen. Amen. But watch this. It comes from the mouth. Now, we know that verse. It says what? Faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word of Christ, actually, in the Greek, word of Christ. Revelation, preaching about the Lord Jesus Christ. But what's the next verse? How shall they hear? The following verses tell us, how shall they hear? Listen to this. How shall they hear without a preacher? But today, especially in charismatic, you know, the churches that, that uh, believe in the gifts of the Spirit, they can say, well, you know what? I can hear God direct. God speaks to me direct. Yeah, God does. God speaks to me also. Well, how do you think I came up with time and space? You think I, I, I'm, I'm out of space when I receive that? <laughs> so God, God speaks. God speaks to you. God speaks to me. Amen? Just remember that if God tells you to do something, God will speak to your wife also. Especially as a major move. Amen? You are in this together. God sees one flesh. It doesn't need two. God sees you one. When God calls the man, God calls the wife. God sees one. When God says, I bless you, it is two of you. It's a twofold. Amen? So, God speaks to us direct. Yes. In fact, in the the weeks to come, I'll be sharing more of that, the steps. Amen? How God leads us and how to follow the leading. But listen carefully, you hear God clearest many a times through the sounding board of the teachers or the pastors, the leaders that God has appointed over you. Especially in the major move. Listen, amen? And if you're listening to anointed teaching and preaching, and you see carefully, it's all got to do with the gospel, not just listening to the legalistic preaching. Not every preacher out there, okay, you ought to be washing your feet by. Some of it your feet get even more entangled. (laughs) Listen to those who exalt the Lord Jesus Christ and preach the gospel of grace. Amen. Amen. Are you with me so far? So he says, how shall they hear without a preacher? Some Christians say, I can hear without a preacher. I can hear God without a preacher. But the Bible says, how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? So we need to support those who are sent by God. Not those who go uh, on their own, uh, those who are sent by God, commissioned by God. And the anointing will prove that, Amen. will vindicate that. Those who don't run for money, 
they run to glorify Him. Amen? Listen to preachers like that. How shall they hear without a preacher? So the idea of he faith coming by hearing is hearing through the preaching word. The word being preached. What a word we've received today. Subscribe to the Joseph Prince Ministries YouTube channel for daily updates. And don't forget to share it with someone you know. You never know who might need to be encouraged today.